Good evening, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to the tonight's select board meeting. Before we start, I'm going to apologize because I have a very bad cold. <clears throat> and most people who can't understand me probably can really not understand me now. So I apologize. Um, you all doing fine. Thanks. <laughs> all right, so consent agenda for tonight. Um, minutes from the, from the 13th. Uh, warrants AP 1630, PR 1630. We have a permit for a one-day alcohol license for the top of the campus for the commencement ball for April 29th. And then we have to sign the election warrant for the March 1st presidential primary, Super Tuesday. So moved. Second. No discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 <coughs> so now we're rocketing ahead at warp speed. We ahead of schedule. Um, How about we just take quickly the scheduled department meetings? We could do that quick. We could do that. So, department head meetings for the budgets? Right. So, uh, you want to combine one and two there together? Uh, sure. Yes. Very quickly. Uh, so, the first part of this is the submission of the preliminary. I want to underscore the word preliminary. Uh, budget for fiscal year 2017. This is a budget put together on, based upon best estimates of numbers that are going to emerge over the next couple of weeks. The governor is giving his State of the Commonwealth address tomorrow night. Then he's going to address the MMA uh, on Friday, where we're going to be in attendance. And then he's going to release his budget. Uh, shortly afterwards, uh, and at that point, we'll know a lot more about our state aid figures. The Chapter 70 formula will, for FY17 will be out in preliminary form, so a lot of numbers will start gelling up. But uh, right now, we have a preliminary uh, budget for us to start working on. It covers the all town functions. Uh, the select board asked us to prepare our budgets in a couple of different ways. So when you look at each department's budget, you'll notice that there is a budget pr presentation, and then you've asked for COLA information, and that uh, is what's set at 1.5% uh, and 2%, and so those additional costs for each position are also included in departmental budgets. And then you gave uh, instructions to the departments that if they were to go beyond the level services budget presentation, that the <coughs> program expansion be presented in a separate format with numbers and narrative. I've included those as a separate part of the budgets where there's been a program expansion. In some cases, these program expansions are very small and uh, very easily dealt with, and others, uh, they involve um, taking things in new directions, uh, really expanding services, and that will require some more uh, consideration and thought. Uh, finally, the, the departments, some departments, not all, but some departments did prepare narratives, and I wanted to make sure that you had their budget presentation in their own words, and so that's appended at the very end of the, of the budget book. So there's a lot of information there. I'm sure we'll be having lots of discussions, but uh, uh, I wanted to make sure that you had it and that we began talking about it. And copies of this has been, have been sent electronically to the board as well as the Finance Committee. We have hard copies for the Finance Committee, which will be disseminated <coughs> to them in the next couple of days. All right. So the next part is to meet with the departments, and how would like how would the board like to do that? I thought we discussed having the finance committee meet with them first. <coughs> we did. Okay. Aren't we doing it together with them like we did last year? No. 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 We finance. decided last meeting not to. Wrote the finance committee have their ability to talk to them, and then if we want to talk to certain ones, we need to talk to all of them, or just certain ones. So it's up to us how. We're going to let the finance committee have the first shot with them. How are we going to make sure that the finance, I mean, uh, part of the process this year was having everybody do a SWOT analysis so that we could put the budget in the context of the SWOT analysis. Mm -hmm. So 
given the fact that we have a almost brand new finance committee, how do they have that information? And they uh, do have the SWOT analysis. Um, I think that reinforcing the linkage between the SWOT analysis and the budget priorities uh, needs to be uh, reinforced in the budget calendar. And here, I do point out that we do have a SWOT analysis which highlighted the needs of the part of the town for the next fiscal year but uh, we need to reinforce that mm -hmm. uh, and I'm wondering if it makes sense for the finance committee for the select board and finance committee to at least meet in advance of them doing all all the department meetings and I my concern being that um, we're trying very hard not to do things the way that we've always done it and and I say that as a you know six-year veteran of the finance committee, and I know how it had been done in the past, and that's certainly what Mark um, Kopaki, who thank God volunteered to to chair it, um, is familiar with. And um, that process is really line-item detail, looking for you know what's higher or lower than the year before. And I think it just probably would be good to have a discussion. With that's them. fine. So we could schedule, we could try to get them to come to one of our meetings, ask them to come to the next meeting. Okay. Or at least the chair comes to the next meeting. Mm -hmm. uh, one, one of the other things we've talked about is maybe having one of the, one of the select board members attend each of their meetings as well. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. um, instead of having it as one joint meeting. Yeah. Are they doing Saturday mornings again? I mean, do we know what their schedule is? We, do not. we, we don't know what their schedule is. They're okay. going to have a meeting uh, uh, sometime in two weeks. Uh, prior to your February 3rd meeting, mm -hmm. uh, I, they have talked about doing Saturday morning meetings. Mm -hmm. So I think that's, I, th I think there's a high probability that we're mm -hmm. going to see the return of the Saturday morning meetings. Yeah. I mean, I can't commit to all of them, but I mean, I, I will exercise best efforts to go to as many as I can. I so work every other Saturday. Right. So. I know that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if we actually set up a schedule, maybe then one of us can go, we can cover all their meetings. Yeah, and the more the merrier. I mean, you know. I'm okay with that. No. Well, if we get more too many more, we have to post it as our meeting too. Right. No, yeah, but <coughs> I've never seen more than two select board members at any yeah. finance committee meeting ever. Kind of going back to the archaic way of doing budgets, where there was a big push for select board and. Um, finance to work together on the budget and now we're pushing back and going the other way again it kind of befuddling my mind a little bit <laughs> exactly <coughs> and it looks like you're going to be the board, the board so is going to have one opinion and the finance committee is going to have another opinion and we're going to end up worse than we were before with the tri board meetings well I already see it happening we made quite a bit of progress in the past couple of years with the tribe board, and now we're wandering away from it. Most, most municipalities have it totally have it separate. <coughs> so the finance committee does their part, and the council select board does their part. Okay. So we can try to go back. Well, that's, that's what we said years ago, and then the push was to do both of them together. So we're now going to have them present their budget, and we'll present our budget. Is that what's going to happen? I'm, no. I'm okay with the, I, I don't have an issue with the finance committee working it up, up front. It's just I think it needs to be done with some, I'm going to say direction, or and maybe a better word is context, because. And the only reason I'm leery about this is mm -hmm. because we have an all new finance board. Right. And I think they're, I mean, some of them have the experience of, of being on a finance committee, mm -hmm. but not all of them do. Yeah. I mean, well, I, w I would think at a minimum that, you know, we, we talked at the end of the SWOT analyses and we talked about priorities um, from, for again, just from our perspective. We're not town meeting, but from our perspective where we think maybe we need to apply some resources. And it seems like at, at least that conversation should take place directly with the finance committee. So as they're going through the budgets, they know that these are kind of the areas that we're concerned about and would like to see potential changes. So then we can reach out to the finance committee and see how they want to align it and give them some of our feedback on our concerns. I think we should. If we can do that before they meet mm -hmm. on the, in two weeks? A couple of weeks. 
maybe at our first meeting in February. <coughs> well, if we get them to come to the first week in February and, and mm -hmm. talk to them before that meeting. Mm -hmm. okay. So, <coughs> based on that, then, then we can either not set a schedule today or set the schedule for next at the next meeting. Mm -hmm. I think at the next meeting. Mm -hmm. Can I ask just uh, a couple of questions of, of David? Okay, right. for are they budget yep. related? Um, I just said three questions. One of them was um, <coughs> a couple of people have reminded me about ma maintenance. We talked about the building maintenance line items mm -hmm. and rolling them to considering rolling them together rather than having them all over. And then that developed a whole conversation about management, but the reason we were talking about that was working with the Municipal Building Committee mm -hmm. to make sure that we had adequate funding right. um, for that. Is that reflected in, in this budget? Or no, not? it is not. The, uh, the, the, I got the, the Municipal Building uh, Maintenance budget was one of the last ones that I received. And it had a two thousand dollar increase uh, in it, uh, which surprised me. Um, I made further adjustments to the uh, to the uh, maintenance uh, budget because of the uh, North Hadley Village Hall. And we intend to sell that, so I don't think we need to maintain that any any longer. Um, but that's worth that's worth looking at, mm -hmm. taking consolidating those other departments such as public safety. Uh, library uh, into uh, into the uh, maintenance budget. Okay. So, so is everybody still um, agree with that? Remember we talked about. I still have an issue of how we're going to actually manage that. So right. I'm and not, that, I'm not that's why I'm bringing it up. It's really doing it. So we figure out how to manage it. Mm -hmm. we agreed to discuss. But it. we agreed to discuss it <laughs> yeah. for this budget cycle. Mm -hmm. So maybe we could put that on an agenda item yep. with the municipal building committee. I think we need to discuss it before we discuss it in the school building committee. Okay, but I mean, at least the contents of the line items, yes. they should be involved. So we make sure we're not making cuts where maybe we shouldn't be or adding where we don't need it, whatever. The few that are combined are still struggling. The few, the other ones that are within their budgets, find the money to do the maintenance and stuff. And then I had just two other, um, the information technology report. Right, we haven't received that. We we are bugging them about that, so it hasn't come in yet. Okay, did they give us a deadline? It was yeah. due back in. It was due back in December. So Cause that's a critical. So have you been emailing them to bug them? Mm -hmm. Would you email them again and copy the entire board? Sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then the third thing is the wage study. Wage study. I have a UMass student working on that, uh, and she and I are going to be meeting next week to. Uh, review her results. She's from the Eisenberg School of Management. Okay. And could you maybe just shoot an email out and let us know exactly what she's doing too, just in case mm -hmm. if we've got one bite at the apple and we want, you know, have any other thoughts on it? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm done. Actually, considering what I've heard from some other communities, we might find that we're uh, actually paying pretty darn well at Hadley after the study is all said and done. That's so, why we're doing it. It's interesting. I would have never thought that. OK, so that's the budget. So we have a preliminary budget, and we're, we'll start. So we'll talk to the Finance Committee, see how they want to do it, mm -hmm. whether they want to just have their meetings, have one select board member attend, or whether they want to do a joint meeting. Um, that, OK, that's good. So we have a 715 appointment. It's the Helping Hearts for Hadley Schools, the annual road race for the benefit of Hadley Schools. Thank you for having me. Um, Roxanne Downey, I'm on the board. This will be our fourth annual piece. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, I want to start off by thanking you for backing us with your support for the last three years. And along with the Hadley Police Department, Chief Mason, and the Hadley Fire Department, with Chief Spank and Abel. Um, this year we're again coming and asking if we have permission to paint our logo apples <coughs> on the road. road. Um, we do that with the support of the police department. They kind of help us. We do it on the morning during the week where it's not busy. Um, the other thing is we want to put signs along the road, road race and then the sign banner on Route 9 on the chain of fence. So that's what we're looking for from the selectmen. And when right. is it again, Rex? It is April 10th, a Sunday. 
Um, registration starts at 9.30, it's at the Hadley Elementary School, and the race starts at 10.30. And then we'll also be doing the block party afterwards. Mm -hmm. Do you know who's coming to the block party this time? We are still working on that. Um, Peterson Production will be there again, um, the Sugar Shack. And we believe we have the support of Whole Foods once again. Okay. Who's been very gracious for the town. Um, so, and we're still working on some more. I'll make a motion to approve the request from Helping Hearts for Hadley Schools. Second. Any more discussion? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. We hope to see you all there. It's yep. running. Um, walk, walk. Maybe we might just you can walk. <laughs> we'll take it. Thank you. Maybe we just come to eat barbecue. Yeah. You can do that. <laughs> Roxanne, how if, it, if it, the people are watching on TV wanted to support it, how could they how could they support it? Businesses and other people that are in town that don't want to run or something like that? We that you accept have, checks or anything by any chance? We absolutely do. We <laughs> have a website. Um, you can go, it's www.helpingheartsforhadleyschools.org. Um, and there's links on there to register to sign up to donate. There's contact information for the board members. Um, and there's also something on there too, if you want to run and if you donate, there's certain amounts of money where we waive the registration fees if you donate so much. And you've raised almost $50,000 already in the last three years, correct? Yes. We are actually presenting a check to the school committee at their next meeting for 2015 race which was $18,000. So prior to that was 30000 that we've given back to the school. It's fantastic. Thank, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. So thank, thank you all for the support. Thank no you problem. for the town. Thank you for doing it. All right. This closes up to 720. So we have a presentation on the DPW search, DPW director search. Okay. So um, just kind of recap for everybody. Um, <coughs> We had posted this position uh, in the early part of the year, um, began a search process, and then actually stopped um, and decided that we were going to alter the uh, resume so that it was no longer requiring um, engineering licensure and put that back out. So the applications were due um, by the end of November, I believe. Um, and then the DPW search committee uh, began meeting to uh, go through the resumes, et cetera, in January. And um, we did have some of the applicants from the first round uh, chose to continue to uh, want to be considered as candidates in the second round. And when all was said and done, we had um, 12 uh, applicants. We actually had more. There were a few of them who wound up withdrawing for whatever reason before we actually um, got to the evaluation process. Um, but the DPW search committee was comprised of three members, one from each division <coughs> within the current DPW. So uh, Sharon, Gary Berg, and uh, John Wiskevitz actually represented the sewer department as a sewer department employee. Um, Jerry and myself, as you know, were the members from the select board. We had an experienced uh, DPW, uh, former DPW employee from Northampton who's a Hadley resident. Uh, Tom Smith participated in the committee. And we also had a um, at-large member from the community, Hank Barstow. Is everybody right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so seven. Um, so we went through, um, we created a grid with questions and kind of scoring criteria and we selected six candidates from the pool to be interviewed and conducted those interviews um, with the end result being that we felt that one candidate in particular um, really stood out uh, compared to the others. And just tell you a little bit about him. Um, his name is Marlo Warner from Greenfield and um, he you know, just to try to summarize, he technically um, had uh, appropriate licensing. He worked his way up through um, the DPW, um, you know, starting at, at uh, entry level positions and, you know, has a, a career that indicates that he's really grown in the job. Uh, military background, 
if you think about the key functional areas within the Department of Public Works, um, he has experience in water, he has experience in sewer, he has experience in... Licensed mechanic. He's a licensed mechanic, he has experience in highway. Um, you know, so technically, uh, really no, no concerns rose during the process and we were extremely impressed with his qualifications in that regard. Um, and I think that from the committee's viewpoint, what then further um, made him stand out compared to some of the other candidates was a proven track record of uh, leadership, management skills, um, you know, personnel matters, union negotiations, <coughs> um, computer skills. He seems to be very literate in that regard. So um, it was the unanimous decision of the search committee that we really recommend just one candidate to the select board as the most qualified. <coughs> And uh, Marlo Warner is that individual. Okay. And for the two <coughs> members of the select board who uh, did not participate in the process, um, have a summary of his qualifications here that he handed out when he left the meeting as well. Okay, so we need to decide our next steps. Mm -hmm. So we have a couple choices. We can keep going with the normal process, which would be to bring, bring him in interview him by the whole board and then decide what to do or we can skip that part and move forward so that's our really our decisions before us at this time mm -hmm. correct and it seems like that's really I mean obviously again well and John has to recuse himself as a select board member from from this discussion anyway um, but clearly he was part of the process Jerry and I are two of the members who voted to recommend him, so I guess it ultimately comes down to yours and uh, Joyce's comfort level. Well, the other, the other option is not comfort level, but whether we just want to have him interview in front of the town, let the people of the town see him and listen to him as well. And that's the other purpose for having the, the, in the formal interview in front of the full select forum. Camera. I don't believe Mr. Warren would have any problem with doing any of that. We would yes. love to come in and speak. Yep. That's just, that's the, I you thank you for your uh, due diligence um, on the whole committee, and um, I think it is most appropriate that he come before the board and uh, answer any other questions that might arise. Or, okay. Know. So and that's what the way we've usually done it, even though there's just one uh, candidate that. Um, does remain, and I guess the other question is, has anybody looked at for his references? Um, that process wouldn't start until it was clear that he was... Um, yeah, we usually do that after the... The offer's okay. being made. I'm just saying because he's mm -hmm. your only sole candidate, I would have thought maybe that process would have started. Just didn't want to get out in front of the full board Didn't on jump that. any steps. Yeah. <laughs> didn't right. not jump any steps. Mm -hmm. All right, so is everyone in agreement we schedule him to come in for an interview? Mm -hmm. And I would imagine we want to do it as expeditiously as possible. So would we like to do it for our first meeting in February if he's available? Yep, I believe he's available. I already talked to him about that. Okay, so mm -hmm. why don't we do that then? Mm -hmm. We want to do, we're all in agreement, right? Mm -hmm. uh, yes. All right. Okay, so that's how we'll do it. Okay. Mr. Barstow is on the committee. Anything oh. you'd like to add, sir? No, great. Thanks for serving. And then thanks to everyone for serving. There's last several DPW employees that were also involved. Correct, and, Chairman. Yep, so so everybody was in agreement. It was unanimous. Yeah. <clears throat> His name's not Mike, but I guess that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. It begins with an M. Yeah, it does begin with an M. All right. So we'll move on to, we'll do the, I think the uh, all board meeting follow-up is going to take a while. So why don't we touch on the uh, dispatch and public safety uh, SOPs. Mike? Yes, I guess we're just doing a follow-up on la uh, the last meeting's uh, information that we presented here. 
So I'd like to just ask him to be here if there were any questions. All right. So last time, uh, uh, Chief uh, Mason presented the uh, SOGs uh, for police and dispatch. Uh, unfortunately, the board had not received a copy of that. You received those electronically. It <coughs> goes to many, many pages. Um, and so the, the, the chief just requests, is the board going to take any action or are you content to let the 30 days expire, in which case they would take effect? Once the 30 days up? Uh, that would be in another two weeks. But if we took action, then he can... He can get move. going right away. I make a motion to uh, accept the dispatch and police standard operating guidelines as presented by our public safety management team. Second. Is there any discussion? They were actually quite thorough. I fell asleep a few times. I was just going to say, it was a little, I'm sorry. A little dry in parts. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of that going on. Yeah. yeah. I didn't make it all the way through, though, but it took more than one, one attempt. Three. <laughs> so, no further discussion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And thank you guys for working on that. Yeah. Good job. Yeah. Big deal, yeah. No, no one's here for the North Hadley Hall. We'll just go ahead and talk. Are you staying for North Hadley Hall? Yeah, I'm here all night. <laughs> oh, myself. yeah, okay. <clears throat> so why don't we talk more about follow-up from the all board meeting? You come up if you want to, or you stay. Sure. Um, so <clears throat> the discussion is kind of what we want to do next after the all board meeting. I think we heard a lot. Um, we definitely heard that we're behind the eight ball a bit in some session, some aspects of some people moving forward with the library definitely we need to as a select board need to move processes along with the other buildings a little faster um, <clears throat> and then I keep hearing the need for a survey survey yeah so <clears throat> a lot of people have, have voiced that opinion that they thought that's one of the things that came out of it was the need for a survey to the town of Hadley and ask them truly these are the things that are before you what do you really prefer um, so, with that being said, um, does anybody have any <coughs> comments they want to throw out there about this? Well, you were always on the understand, understanding that you had a company that does surveys. Well, I got involved with a company in Amherst who does surveys. Now, if we go and do a survey, I would propose we have a we hire somebody to come in and just put it together and and, and do it for us. Um, so, if we were to do that, that's where I would propose doing it. I totally agree with that. I mean, if, if we're going to do a survey, I don't think trying to do it on the cheap is a wise decision. Yep. So get a whole bunch of jump balls and, and uh, it's the evaluation of the, the end result of the survey that's critical in the process. I wonder if there's anybody at UMass that could um, do that for us. There probably is, but <sighs> it's taking us how long to get somebody to do this? The manage wage study. Yeah. Um, Let's use somebody that does it as a profession. Yeah, I, I think it's time to. S <clears throat> I apologize, everyone was out there. I'm kind of falling down here with my cold. So if I, <clears throat> but anyhow, I do believe we need to. Uh, we need to move it faster. We need to be doing this a little quicker. Mm -hmm. So. <clears throat> well, can I? Can I throw in another thought though? Um, I'm fine doing a survey, but. My concern is that we come to a screeching halt and say, okay, well, now we're going to wait for a survey. Um, and everybody here knows how long it takes. I mean, first of all, somebody needs to frame the conversation with the consultant to tell them what it is we're trying to accomplish with the survey. That'll take time. Then the consultant has to put together the questions, and then it has, they have to be reviewed, and then go through the mechanics of how are we going to get it out, who, how are we going to target people. So. My guess is that if we started down the path of a survey today, that we wouldn't have any meaningful results for, I don't know, five, six months maybe at this point. That's just a guess. It's just a guess, but I mean, it's the reality. We're in budget season right now. I mean, I, what I think I can comfortably say is there's not a chance we would have any meaningful results from a survey like that um, that would be helpful in this budget cycle. So I'm going back to the fact, and it was brought up at the, the public meeting, that you know, 
the master planning update had a lot of really good information in it, and I think a lot of that information helps inform the immediate issue regarding the senior center in the library and the idea of a campus feel in the center of town, et cetera. So I'm wondering if it would make sense perhaps to even bring somebody in, you know, objective from the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission to do a little bit more than just a cursory overview. I mean, that's what they did last time, but maybe focus our attention on what they heard at those meetings. Um, and then I think the other thing that needs to happen is that we need to have folks representing the senior center and the library, probably the planning board, in here at a select board meeting with the municipal building committee sooner rather than later. Because we do have to keep this moving forward. I do. I'd like a pool of questions from all the boards and committees that we're going to put together on this list. It would make it a lot easier for whoever you want to put in charge of this and, and go forward with the questions. I, I think Molly has a great point with the fact that we just did this with the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission. It would be nice if they'd be able to spearhead this for us. But we need valuable information on there to help people in the decision-making process with some numbers available or a thought process regarding the framing. Just simply talking about issues isn't going to answer the questions or bring people enough information for them to make an educated discussion or decision regarding how they would like to vote on stuff. Would you like something is easy to say yes to. Would you like some would you like to renovate Russell School if it costs twenty five million dollars is a very helpful piece of information. Um, so we need to put numbers to these things and it has to be done the right way and I don't yep. care how long it takes. I think what's the most important thing is that it's done right and done once so that people have confidence uh, that the information that we provide them with at the end of this survey research is something that we're going to use as a follow-up to go forward with our plan for the next 20 years. Any reason we can't run parallel track stuff? Because, I, I mean, I, I think we can do both. I think we can, but I think we have to have it all coming Yeah, all, to all one. roads coming to one, yeah. <clears throat> um, so, I hate to say this, but um, I'm a little leery of using same way I'm leery of using UMass, I'm leery of using Pioneer Valley Planning Commission. Why, why? Um, you mean for the survey? For the survey. Um, they have really let us down on the North Hadley Hall and the historic restrictions. Okay. I have, you know, they probably agree. There's a lot of people there. I work with them all the time. There's some great people there, but it seems if they get a small thing that's not part of their normal wicket, they, they don't do it very well or they, they don't follow through very well, so, sort of the same way a student doesn't always follow through unless you make the student do it. I don't think we have time and we don't have the people to allocate to be on them and push them a whole a whole way, and that's what happened with the historic preservation restriction for North Adley Hall, is there was not someone on top of them because we're, we're a volunteer, well, we're a volunteer elected board and the historic commission's a, a volunteer board, so that didn't move as fast as it should have, um, and we'll talk about that next. I really think we need to <coughs> hire somebody to, to focus on this and move it. Uh, and we could still have the same problem we're having with the IT survey. Um, mm -hmm. We could. Uh, mm -hmm. So that being said, there's a lot of there's a lot of ifs here. The other yeah. thing I would like to do is, is, as Jerry said, we need to pull the numbers together. So right. I do realize this is going to take a little longer. Um, one of the things I would also propose is we put out an RFP for land in the village center and see what comes back and see what those values are. If we put out a request for a proposal, we're not obligated to actually execute it. It can be set up so that we have to have town meeting authority to move mm -hmm. forward after we do it. Mm -hmm. But by putting out the RFP, we would have firm numbers that we can say in the, in the survey that this is what it would be if we needed, got more land and this is the land that's available to get. It would be, it would be there. Um, that would help us a great deal, mm -hmm. I believe. Yep. So <clears throat> I am looking at this as being a long, longer process than, and, and I would like to push to be done before we go to, to annual town meeting, to try to be done before annual town meeting, which we may not make, which brings us to the question that I had for the library, <laughs> and that was, they had three items they have to take, or they want to take to annual town meeting. They want to take a request for permission to apply for the design grant. Uh, what was the second one? Using the Hooper Street School site. The Hooper School site. Yep. And the third is 
approve um, support of us going for the grant. The town has to support vote to support us yeah. going for the, the grant. The third one was the was for the preliminary design. The, the state of the design at that yes. point to approve mm -hmm. what we've put together. So those three you want to do at annual town meeting. So can you do two of those and still apply for the grant and do the land? Well, we don't apply for the grant until January. January. Okay, so you could actually However, wait. So I think I sent you an email today. I'm not sure if you received it, but um, one of the things we told David was we do have two town meetings yes. before January. Um, one of the reasons we were work so hard and so in advance was that if something didn't work out in May and we had good information we would have a second opportunity to go forward with the town in the fall and still make the grant deadline that's why we kind of kept ahead of schedule and got ready for the May meeting so so then I, that's where we are so then I think we're in good shape if we push everything and push for the fall town meeting on because if we have the numbers, and everyone knows what the numbers are. So are you asking us to push to the fall town meeting? If you, no, you, I mean, that's up to your decision. Your decision is whether you want to ask all three of those questions at annual town meeting. That's for you to yep. decide. Um, what's the third question? I got design land. What's the third one? Just apply for the grant. Apply? Oh, yeah. Just support no, of not, us applying for the grant. That's There's not no money. 17. Okay. On your schedule, that was until 17. January of 2017. We applied for the application. Yeah. 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 Next year, yeah. So this is not for money. Yeah. This is just saying, go ahead Do you and support. apply for the grant. Right. The only one that's going to be a problem, I think, is say, the we, we cited the building on top of an existing building. And unless you can say, <clears throat> we've cited the building so it could fit on top of that building or in the back of that building, I, I'm not sure people would actually be willing to support Siding the building on top of a building and the rest of the town not having a plan what to do with the building underneath your new building Right. Oh, right, right, mm -hmm. right oh, And we okay. did ask the MBLC if the we did kind of stretch it and say well if we built in the back Is that still part of the site? Like do you, do you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it's all one site and they mm -hmm. said no so approving the site has to be more specific than just that track of land do, is that that's a little confusing? Is that nope. do you understand? Crystal what I'm clear. Yeah. Okay. So okay. I, 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 I just wanted you to know we tried that kind of like can we approve the whole piece and it was done. Um, it's kind of funny to listen to the way school building committee does it and library committee do it. Uh, library people are much more uh, fixated in the exact. <laughs> school people are less. Oh, you mean the MBLC is? Yes, the yeah. MBLC is, seems to be much more lax than the Massachusetts the school building. Yeah, <laughs> that's interesting. So. Um, so they're saying you can't have it on the back piece of the property. So we would have to say that. If, if you say that's where it's going to go. So if we put it here. on the back, comes back to the why we chose the front as opposed to the back when given all selections was we are more likely to get the grant because they want a library visible from a road because they want it you know in a place that if we put it in the back we're less appealing as a grant and you're also putting a new building behind an old building all right and the better the proposal is the more likely that we'll get the maximum funding that they are able well the to big get question is it's what happened to the federal grant on the hooker school when we did the when we received it for the um, that, to me, that's that. the big question whether you can use that site at all or not. Time frame will be over by the time yeah. the ground gets yeah. cut. Yeah, so uh, that was um, a project that was initiated in November 1997, 20 year lifespan on it. So by the time we're talking about breaking ground in January 2019, we'll have gone beyond 20 years. Uh, <clears throat> we would have to uh, have an active plan, however to move the senior center and a real really good reason to demolish the, the senior center where it currently is um, in order to completely satisfy the terms of the grant. I don't think that there's a problem with us coming up with a reason why the current building doesn't work, but I think that the crux of the matter right now is where does where do we put the senior center, the new senior center, if that's the course of action we're going to take. 
I think when one thing we didn't get a chance to tell you at the last meeting was stapled, I'm sorry I didn't bring it, but stapled to what we gave you was a design. Um, Suzanne had asked if our architect could kind of do a little schematic of the senior center with the library and we handed that out to you last time. So you have a design of the library next to a new senior center in the back lots. Just so you Yeah. Know. But some people may say keep the senior center and have a new library behind it. Yeah, they may say that. Yes. But the the MBLC may also say you pay more. Right. <laughs> right. And I did write to them asking kind of in their opinion how did we look if we did that. I did send an email. I have not received an answer yet. Well, and part of the reason I was suggesting getting um, everybody together again sooner rather than later with the building committee is they're also, um, you know, early on in the process when when different sites were being discussed, the um, space where the old gym is located was dismissed because it's in a floodplain. But subsequent to that, I've talked to a handful of people who said, no, you can actually, you know, remediate that, and there are, there are ways around that. And, I know that's not ideal because the library, you know, clear direction was given to the design folks about what to look at and it didn't include that. But because this is a huge decision, I think all of that really needs to be fully vetted and on the table before we go to um, town meeting. And that seems to be something that should happen sooner rather than later. And if it's absolutely out of the question, let's know that. Yep. So who vets an idea like that? I mean, because we were told it, that wasn't Again, an option. So how do we <coughs> right? But you were you were told that it that's wasn't the truth. You that's were told it wasn't an option by a committee that a, the select board appointed. But we didn't have that conversation with the committee. And you know, again, I'm finding out that it's when I heard that, I thought, oh, that's a done deal. It's at a floodplain. One cannot build in a floodplain. Which and that's not the case I found out subsequent to that so again if there's new information we should at least yes yeah, so I'm asking how we would go about getting that information well that's what I'm we asking. would yeah yeah oh okay. we would get it oh having, okay that was the question yeah. whether we needed to get it or yeah. no and it may I be impractical it may be it may, but let's at least <coughs> explore yeah. explore it yeah because yeah. that would that would remove the issue of the senior center so it w might introduce other issues but at least you know, there's some adjoining pieces of property right there. Where? That uh, long Hooker School. That's what Guilford yeah, that, was talking about paid. earlier yeah. regarding yeah. the purchase of property. But I mean, I, twelve acres. I, I know, I know a few, few of the abutting neighbors have been talking about it so when the building committee was first enacted. Okay. You know, they they've really been doing a good job for the last couple of years. Yeah. And we have over a hundred million dollars worth of buildings you want to build. That's just not going to happen. We need to concentrate on one, whichever direction the people tell us to go in, which I'd really like to see, not 20 or 50 people, but uh, uh, and concentrate on what, what what's most important right now. We're throwing Park and Rec and the Fire Department out in the street right now because we're selling a building right underneath them. And we have no place to put those two. You know, it, 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 everything seems to be interlocking into each other, and there's there's no rhyme or reason in the direction we're going here for some reason. Well, I mean, we we're just going forward with the grant that's the yeah, town by yourselves, for, yeah, to do. Yeah, so. but, but we need the input from all the rest of, of the community in in the direction we're going to go before I make a decision for sure. Well, see, everybody so, has their plan, and we're very happy that you have your plan, and you're all set with what you want to do and how you can do it. That's great. But in the meantime, this side of the board has, well, on our agenda tonight is the sale of that building, which we, was approved at town meeting two years ago. Um, and just getting that now done has been an act of Congress. So, I mean, everything just seems to take a long time. and. By the vote yesterday, you, you've got three things that were on the agenda, two passed and one didn't. So when you're asking people to increase their taxes and they've got to make decisions on what they want for this town, and you're talking about all different types of, of things that we need, and they're all necessary. 
So everybody's going to have to chime in, and that was one of the reasons why a survey, I think, is important, because we're not going to get $100 million, and we're going to have to decide what people really want to do. We get $100 million. Yeah, well, we didn't win the lottery, that's for damn sure. Otherwise, yeah. it would have been taken Josh and I tried. <laughs> actually, we did. <laughs> actually, someone said, but, can we invest when it gets right, that so But you voted for us to <coughs> get a grant to the, a preliminary study, yes. and we had two years to do that study to apply for this next grant. The town voted unanimously for us oh, to do that. Oh, absolutely. I'm just saying, so the town wrong. spent twenty five thousand so, dollars on that study. Yeah, we so understand that. So we're trying to keep you still moving. Yeah, yeah right. We're exactly. trying to keep your project still moving, and then account accommodate right. all the other projects. Right. Yeah, no, no absolutely. Yeah. Might, might I ask the question? Are there any other projects ongoing at this point that are at a comparable stage of planning to what the library's put together? Well, no. Which, which are those? The only other one that's getting close to being at your stage is probably what we're hearing from the Russell School, is whether or not we'll be moving forward on the Russell School. So, but then <clears throat> the Russell School, we put some time into doing the seismic study and doing some lay preliminary layouts and that. Um, that may come back to be that we decide to, to put all that in the trash or set it all aside for now to deal with you and the senior center and was well, there is there a program for the rest of school was the is there state money there a, 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 no a program for an the intended building. purpose for that if i might ask is there a purpose there's intended oh, for the, the intended rebuild, purpose rebuild? yes there's different have, ones yeah having the building for what there are a variety of them yeah some of them including town hall, that becoming yeah. the new town hall i mean they're, they're thinking of park and rec and part of it yeah. uh, um maybe TV. some of the senior center h pat h pat, wants pat to go goes there. in the, they were talking about all sorts of things not handicapped accessible. I mean, it's it's a Pandora's box. <laughs> but it's not a, it's not a building no one wants to mark, knock down. Um, I wouldn't mind. Don't ask me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I won't ask you. You know me about old buildings, and I have a lot of people that will agree with me, but we won't go into it. Tonight. We could all leave for a week and then let you <laughs> do it, and then everything would be okay, right? <laughs> so moved. <laughs> <laughs> so moved. <laughs> So, all right, so I think we're all in agreement here. Yeah, so what, so want to summarize what so, I think we talked about? So we talked about <clears throat> we need to put together our survey. So we'll be working on the survey questions. Mm -hmm. We need to have information on that. So I will talk to the building committee and talk they to... They did offer to help. Yes, and then we'll start laying out the numbers and start pushing numbers, hard numbers, from some of their projects out. Mm -hmm. So we can compare those to other things we're doing. We have the hard number for the library. Um, and then we need to put out an RFP for the land, land in the village, in the village center. center. And you're pretty much got a hard number if we were to buy a piece of land and put a building up in North Adley, Mike. It's the building, the building committee put that together. Okay. So <clears throat> we'll push all, put all that together. We'll, we'll work on all those different pieces. So that means probably if we meet the first week of February, and our schedule on the first week of February is that would be the 3rd and the 10th and the 17th. So so the, what do we have on our schedule for the 3rd? Oh, what, what's the agenda so director. far? You're meeting with Mr. Warner? Finance committee. The finance committee. Uh, the fire chief is talking about the fire study. Um, we have collective bargaining agreements probably. Our report from the MMA uh, annual meeting. Finance committee. Uh, RFP for land. And uh, the revisions to the fire chief's contract. That's what you have so far. Pride. Uh, just the revisions to the fire no, chief. No, Pride is on for the 10th. Uh, the 10th, uh, yeah. What's the revision? We voted it, yes. For the chief. Well, fire chief? just to accept it. Well, the fire chief, you negotiated a contract in, uh, in the executive we session. We had to accept it. Now you have to accept it in the oh. meeting. Uh, we can move that out. <laughs> That'll give us lots of time to do other things. We think. <laughs> no. um, so that meeting's pretty full, I would say. So do we do it on the tenth? The only thing on the tenth right week. now is. The, I know. I won't be here the tenth either. Probably. Yeah. Well, then that's not gonna. But is there something on the third we can move to accommodate it? I mean. Cause the third week we didn't schedule one no, because that's third, the holiday. The third. No. The third. Oh, the third. 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 Uh, third. Yeah. Mike's willing to move the fire management. That's fine. I just had a question. Actually, it's for Dave. The, the, the Donahue Institute did that work for us, evaluating mm -hmm. all that stuff. Mm -hmm. 
and the fire department to usually do police departments, would they be somebody we could reach out to for that survey? Sure. Thank you. Sorry. You want to do the fire study on the 10th then? I'll do it whenever you want. I basically just couldn't do it tonight. <laughs> oh, you were going to do it tonight? What's that? No, you couldn't do it tonight. Yeah. So you want to do it the 10th then? <coughs> right. Yeah, and I won't be here the 10th. You're not important. If I come the 10th, I won't. I'll never make another meeting. Understood. Um, okay, so. Uh, so that's kind of where we're headed. So in the third, let's see if we can bring the senior center in and talk to them about a little more about their more needs issues within, uh, mm -hmm. and maybe to have the building committee come in with them about, because if we did do a needs analysis for mm -hmm. them, they wrote down their needs. Right. So we should start playing around with that, mm -hmm. if that's yeah. okay. Mm -hmm. All right, and I'm assuming you'd wanna be here for that too. <clears throat> We're happy to share, you know, our process with any, you know, and help, you know, kind of the process we lay out and went through with yep. anybody who's interested in it themselves. Well, well, the building committee is kind of doing the same process, but when you have a volunteer group doing it versus a professional who does it for all libraries, it's kind of... We did it. We, the library, the MLC didn't do it. We did it. Right, but it, it, with your it's a prescribed... No, no our, we did it ourselves. We did our whole program, program by ourselves myself. until we hired the architect. Right. Yes. So. But it, in fairness, Joanne, I mean, it, it, but I'm obviously now very familiar with, with what was done and how it was done in-house. Um, phenomenal job, everybody that was involved in it. But it's one thing when you have um, a long-standing track record of, of just libraries going through this because we highly leveraged other programs from libraries and other municipalities. And I'm not trying to minimize the work that was done here because, and then obviously we had to customize it to say, okay, well, this is how all of that work relates to the Goodwin. But what we're dealing with, there's no, no I real meant the model senior center. I meant we would be happy to help the senior center kind of go through the, what we did so they could also. Right, but I'm, I'm just that. saying that it's, it's, I think, different when you're dealing with the other municipal departments. It's not quite I know rules. what you're saying, the, the process, but to, to you know, the, the resources aren't quite as available to the senior <coughs> center or, you know, park and rec or, or the fire department because they're all just so unique compared to right. how the libraries um, put together. Yeah. Of course, we are a library, so we're, we're there to help with research, so yeah. any, any sort of questions come up. That'd be good. Yeah, that, okay. would, that so, would be, yeah. Right. Thank you for your offer. Great. So. Any more discussion about that? Nope. I think we're all still moving forward. No one's That's dead yet. Good. We want to keep moving forward. Okay, so <laughs> to keep things moving forward. Oh, and just one thing, if we are going to be talking about hiring somebody, we need to talk about how we're going to fund mm -hmm. the consultant too. So that, mm -hmm. okay. well, I'll reach out between now and the third and try to find out about yes. how much the price would be. Yeah. Mike would to that company too. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So to keep the process moving forward, we still have to get rid of the building that we voted to get rid of last time. Um, and then, so we also would know more about what to do with the people we're evicting from that building. We're not evicting. Well, I was using. I was placing them. <laughs> So we have the sale available in front of us, right? Is that what we do? Doing? So right. well, let me tell you what my thought process was here. So we, we all looked at the RFP and we liked it. We were okay with it. The only thing we didn't see was the historic restrictions. Mm -hmm. So I had Mr. Nixon put the historic restrictions in here as a example. It's a it's not the final restriction, it is just a this is an it's example of what it could be. Substantially the same as what we will eventually Probably. Where this come from? At the state, right? At the state, state level. Yeah, the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission put this together with the <coughs> Historic Commission, and it's being approved by the state SHPO, State Historic Preservation Officer, right? SHPO. Um, so what I propose is to get this out the door, so people can start looking at it and forming proposals to submit back to us. So the dates we have on here 
is that we would be vote tonight to send it out. Is that we would um, when do we we have to choose when we want it back? You didn't put that date in. I didn't put that date in, so I didn't know. Do you want a short time frame or a long time frame? <laughs> I think we need to give sixty days at least. Yeah. Well, what's considered short? Thirty or less. Yeah, you can only yeah. do twenty. I think is the oh shortest you can do. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I, I would think sixty days would be what we put it out for. Okay. Um, I do know people are interested. Have they seen the restrictions? I do not believe anyone's seen the restrictions, and that's why no one has really talked much about okay. about it. So if the board is in agreement, this is a draft of the of the restrictions. So if there are concerns, we can keep talking about them over the next. 30 to 40 days, there is a deadline where we have to, um, well, these are a draft, so even after the proposals come back, the, the restrictions can change a little bit. Mm -hmm. So is there gonna be a modifying <coughs> letter with this? Should they, you know, if there's one thing on there that somebody's unable to live with that they'd be able to modify and still submit uh, a proposal? Yes, they can do that. Okay. This is just as long as that's clear. Yeah. I mean, it's a proposal. You write what you are okay. proposing, and if you have an issue with something, you can propose something different, or propose eliminating it, or propose saying you want it to be cherry ice cream versus vanilla ice yep. cream. That's the great thing about a proposal. Okay, so you're looking for a motion? Well, I'm looking, yeah, we can have a motion in a second, and we can discuss it some more if we want to. Sure. Okay, I'll make a motion that we. Release, is that the right word? Release. Release the RFP. For 60 days? For 60 days. Second. Any more discussion? I'm not crazy about it. The restrictions? Mm -hmm. We still have time to work on those, like I said. Yeah. Well, let's talk about them then. If you're not crazy about them, let's well, talk. I just think there's just a lot of um, restrictions on the person that's buying the piece of property. Um, having uh -huh. to go back and allow the grantor to view the property and go inside and I don't know who would buy a piece of property and have that kind of restrictions on it. I, I agree with you that's why I wanted to make sure that the letter would be able to be encompassed okay. with this and then if they put that back. If we get no offers on it we can always bring it back and modify it in such a way and let's let them make the modifications at first blush yeah. Yeah. is what I was thinking. If they couldn't make any modifications I have the exact same concerns you do. I do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it's standard. Mm -hmm. If you agree to a historic yeah. restriction, that's usually you have Lord. to. Lord, nobody, nobody would ever buy this building. Uh, people do. Uh, right. Mm -hmm. But wouldn't we also like likely get better, inquiries and have people express their concern about certain restrictions that would inform right. us? Yes, because so you have a question yeah, period. Yeah. There is a question period in here, so you're going to get questions. I mean, we're going to get no information and no discussion mm -hmm. if we don't get it on the street. That's right. That's my right. view. All right, put it on the street. So Sorry. <laughs> I'm losing my head too. So. so so, what often happens is that when questions come in and we realize that, uh, that, that there are significant issues with the RFP, we often issue an addendum to the RFP which would include a little bit more time so okay. that we can, so it's a, there's a dialogue that's built into the process. How will this be posted? This will be posted, it will be advertised in a newspaper, it will be on Compass. Central Register, um, newspaper advertisement, website, and we'll send it out uh, to anybody who wants to have it. Okay. <coughs> All right. Motion second on the floor, Chair. Any more discussion? All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. All right. Where is this? So that helps us keep this moving as well. And that brings us to announcements. On behalf of the DPW Director, Mike Kamoski, at Interim DPW correct, Director, I'd like to thank everybody that voted on behalf of uh, him getting the truck. Uh, very much appreciative to the town this year and wanted me to relay that to everybody. Um, I'd like to voice a concern of the tellers yesterday who point blank told me they were freezing uh, in the uh, venue that we had available to them yesterday to the point where it was uncomfortable being there. I'm not a, you know, I don't, well, I'm a selectman, I'm not on the uh, school committee, but uh, I did want to relay that down here. And when I see Willie Denlinkle dressed in his uh, ice fishing clothes, I guess we should maybe listen to their point. I know 
um, Jessica uh, Spanknable had told them that they should dress accordingly, but it was 58 degrees in there, and I just wanted to voice their concerns. And it's not the first time, and they've been asked to turn the heat up on election days. So, so this is a good this is a good reason to actually <coughs> move forward and then use senior art library to actually have some community space where we can have these small re-elections where we're having a short time period for an election and we don't need a huge building, we just need a small space that's bigger than an office. We should build a community center. I would love to see Okay, well let's hold that for the survey. Yep, yep, there'll there'll yep. be one, tell us what you want at the bottom that's, of that's it. My uh, pictures. Any more? <laughs> uh, just like to announce that uh, open burning season started January 15th. Uh, it will go through May 1st. So oh, seriously? Yeah, seriously. Yes. <laughs> uh, just, awesome. There's been a lot of questions that have come up in the past as to how this works, and if I could just take a, a minute. Um, I just want everybody to understand that the Mass Department of Environmental Protection has put it on our shoulders at the fire department to actually do an assessment of the air quality for the day before we can release permits, and then we also have to review the weather forecast for the day. So it's a multiple, we have to do multiple things before we can act, actually release permits. Burning is from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. You come into the department to get your permits uh, based upon the day that you want to burn. Uh, and it's a $5 fee, which hasn't changed. So we, we would just request that folks are patient with us. Um, agricultural burns are a different op opportunity for farmers that need to schedule something further out. The 24-hour notice for that through the fire chief we can make uh, we can make special accommodations for it. and uh, just want to let you everybody know that uh, there is information at the fire department or they can call the department and ask if they have any other questions so what exactly we still go to the window Sorry. we still go to the window, <coughs> to the window that's correct. Yeah. Yeah. what is an air quality control issue in Adley basically every every day uh, there are monitoring sites throughout Massachusetts and particulate matter that's in the air is surveyed actually I believe one of the survey sites is at UMass uh, if normally it happens more as you get into spring uh, if that air particulate matter gets too heavy the DEP shuts down burning because it's poor air quality folks you know with asthma with stressed uh, breathing abilities you know have issues with it so uh, we are required now to check in daily for the DEP uh, weather report. So the first day of burn season was a day that all districts were not allowed to burn because of air quality. So and uh, can a, can the citizens research that from home before they get their yep, car and uh, drive down? They can go they to the that? DEP website. So if there is uh, if there is something on there that states that the air quality. Uh, has been shown to be not appropriate for the day and that no burning is going to be allowed that'll be on that but they also do have to check with fire weather so if we have like we had the other day the, the high winds or if we have very dry conditions there's also a chance that the state issues the, the red flag days where we're not allowed to burn either so it's a multi-pronged thing so I just want folks to understand that you know we have we have stuff we got to get done before we can just issue the burn permits mm -hmm. so Saturday will probably be a really good day to burn Sunday will. Yeah, right in the middle of the storm. And we have opened up Sundays. Originally, we did not allow burning on Sundays. That is not in the statute. We can burn on Sundays, and we have, uh, we do allow that, so. All right, anything else? Announcements? Um, no, um, I think the uh, deal tests here, we wish to extend our condolences to her on the passing of her um, sister, Linda. All right. Fighting Kevitt's family, Pat Fighting Kevitt's died. She's from uh, Deerfield, but the Fighting Kevitt's family from Hadley is relatively extensive. Condolences to their family as well. Okay, so we have three other items of business to take up if we want to. Anybody want to make a motion? Go into executive session. Make a motion to go into executive session for the purpose of uh, personnel. Mm -hmm. um, not to not reconvene in, in litigation and, and not to reconvene in open contract session. Contract negotiation. Contract negotiation. <laughs> not to reconvene in open session. <laughs> yeah. Is there a second? There is. We'll call we'll that down. <coughs> no. no second. Does, does Chair of the Halley Select Board, I state that the Board has moved and seconded <coughs> to enter into executive session, and I state that the discussion of the matter in the open session would have an adverse effect on the town of Hadley. 
Roll call vote Moskovitz? Yes. Devine? Yes. Maureen? Yes. Chunglo? Yes. Um, Keegan. Keegan. Yes. <laughs> Good night, everybody. I'm saying Keaton. Good night, all. Right? That's all right. <laughs>